Good morning, everyone. I will call the um, January 17 meeting to order. Pledge of Allegiance. Janice, can you lead us? Right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Parks? Here. Commissioner Parvin? Here. Commissioner Ramirez? Here. Alternate Commissioner Richards? Here. Commissioner Rooney? Here. Here. Commissioner Zaragoza? Here. Chair Freeman? Here. Alternate Commissioner Waters? Here. Now we'll go to item four, election of officers for 2018. Item A, elect a chair. Do I have a motion? What's the rotation? I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Linda Parks. Is there a second? I'll second. Are there any other nominations? I, I guess my question is, it's the supervisor position this time, and then is there a... It's a the public. Then, it'll, the, then the public is second. And then public. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Public. Yeah. Public. Sorry. Right. Uh, yes, it's the supervisor's turn for chair this year and, and the public, public member next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So typically the, the uh, vice chair would be the public member. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want to hold the next one or should I just? Um, okay, let's go. Nominations for vice, vice chair. I nominate Pat Richards. Second. You have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Congratulations, Mr. Richards. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, thought, I, thought we... I have to interrupt. The, the sitting public member is David Ross. I thought it was, uh, oh. I thought it was Dave Ross. Oh, I, I thought since sorry, you're up here, you're gone. <laughs> sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to withdraw my motion. Sorry no, Dave Ross that. would be no the... No offense. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say that, but I didn't get a chance. I, 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 I didn't. He's a regular member. Okay, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Still no, 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 no. That, I would... Yes. I withdraw my motion. Okay, motion withdrawn. And Sorry, we'll still love you though. And, and we'll, we'll congratulate Pat for being a vice chair for 10 seconds. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. I will nominate David Ross for the public member. I'll second that. We've got a motion and a second. second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Good. How are we doing? <laughs> uh, next on our agenda is uh, item five, which is agenda review. Do we have any recommended changes to the agenda? No. Not seeing any. Let's go to item six, commission presentations and announcements. Are there any? Not seeing any. We'll go to public comments. Uh, do we have any public comments for items not on the agenda? Not seeing any. We'll go then to our uh, item number eight. Move approval nine of consent. and 10, yes. Consent item eight, items. nine, and 10. Mm -hmm. I have a comment before we vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. What Did item you have a second? Like? Okay. I don't know. I, I, I made a motion. I, don't, I, mean, I don't know. If I'll know. second it. For, second, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, my, my question goes to the auditor services, and I'm wondering if we have a policy in place that um, looks at review of the auditor over a specific period of time, and if we look at rotating out auditors, you know, uh, periodically. The RFPs that we usually issue are every three years, and we ask that the RFPs include an option to renew that contract for, for three-year periods. We're in the uh, second year of that three-year period, so we can exercise the option for one more year, and then we'll do an RFP again. Okay, so three years we go out to Correct. open it. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, we do have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that passes unanimously. And we'll go to item 11, which is our public hearing item. Mr. Lohman will do our staff report. just a moment and I'll be excuse me I will be brief I will not go over all the details that I did in November 
Okay, so this is agenda item number 10, LAFCO 1708. It's the Ventura County Fire Protection District annexation of Santa Paula. <coughs> Again, the proposal is the annexation of the entirety of the city of Santa Paula to the Ventura County Fire Protection District, and this will allow the district to take over fire protection services for the city. The district boundaries are in yellow on that map, and the sphere of influence is uh, red, basically includes the entire county. <coughs> So a little bit of background. So the commission considered this proposal back in November of last year, and it continued the matter till today's meeting. And the reasons for that was to provide the city and the fire protection district additional time to execute a memorandum of understanding or a memorandum of agreement. Now the contents of that memorandum of agreement had to do with the plan for services. However, because the memorandum was not executed, the exact provisions were not known and the commission um, had some reservations about moving forward with it without knowing more um, specifics about that MOA. The continuance also allowed time for the city of Ventura to continue discussions with the fire protection district about possible impacts regarding the potential closure of the county fire station located in between Ventura and Santa Paula. <coughs> uh, and um, so anyway, <laughs> The current status is that the memorandum of agreement was delayed and has not yet been executed, and this was due, of course, to the Thomas fire. Um, however, there is a draft MOA out that both jurisdictions are currently reviewing, and they hope to act on it within the next few weeks. And discussions with the city of Ventura, those were also delayed, again, of course, for the Thomas fire. However, the discussions um, are going to continue, and the district still does maintain that they do not believe that the closure of that fire station would adversely affect fire services in the city of Ventura. So with that, that concludes my presentation, and my recommendation is to continue the matter until February 21st, um, the, the LAFCO meeting of February 21st. So uh, with that, uh, I'd be happy to answer questions. We have a question from Commissioner Parvin. Oh, you're quick. Um, do you, Kai, do you believe that um, there would be an executed MOA by February 21st? Possibly. I mean, the goal is within the next few weeks to have that executed. Uh, it still has to go to the City Council and it has to go to the Board, the board of Supervisors. Uh, the City and Fire District staff would probably be better able to answer that question. Madam Chair, yeah, Kai, can we possibly approve that today subject to the uh, the um, completion of the MOA? Yes, the uh, one of the alternative actions in the staff report is uh, approval of the proposal. And I have included a resolution of approval as attachment to the staff report. And there is a condition uh, in that resolution that says if the two parties cannot come to agreement, of the memorandum of agreement, then after a year's time, the approval will expire and uh, the, the annexation will not So, so that would be the subject to that, that agreement? To the, uh... Absolutely, yes. Oh. This annexation, if it is approved, would not get recorded until both parties have adopted that agreement. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Oh, we have uh, three questions here. Let's follow well, up with uh, Commissioner Barton okay. and we'll go down. Well, I, I mean, I appreciate that question and in a lot of cases, I probably would be okay with that, with the response to that. However, when we review, when LAFCO reviews annexations to cities or districts, we look for as much information as possible to make a sound decision. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the executed MOA is, is, should be part of the packet that we ultimately make our decision on, instead of kind of putting the cart before the horse. It's just a comment. Mm -hmm. Probably have more questions. And I know we also had a, a request to see the MOA, and we were told it's it's confidential. Is that while it is being uh, negotiated? Yes, uh, a, a draft of the MOA was provided to me uh, for informational purposes only, and it was under the understanding that it would remain confidential because it was in progress and it was not finalized. Um, so, again, I did reflect in the staff report the general aspects, the general provisions of, of the MOA in its draft form. Uh, but, yeah, it, it, because it's not in its final form, I did not make it public at the request of the city. And could the commission hear what the topics are of the MOA that you shared with the chair and vice chair and Ms. Commissioner Parvin? 
Well, they are in the staff report. Are they? Okay. Um, and would you like me to share them with you? Yeah, I think sure. that would be helpful so we know what we're talking about when we're talking about the MOA. They, they basically reflect um, most of the services that are provided in the plan for services that was attached to the November staff report. So they do provide additional specificity and um, they memorialize what that agreement says, the plan for services. And they included such things as uh, the purchase and or lease terms of the two cities' fire stations. One's going to be um, leased to the, to the district short term until they build a new one. One will be, uh, I believe it's given to them um, so they can build a, a new station as well. Uh, it's about the transfer of the city's firefighting equipment to the fire protection district, the uh, specifics of that. Uh, it talks about the transfer of funds that were to go to the new fire station in the East Area 1 specific plan. Those are going to be transferred to the fire protection district as well. Um, and then there's uh, several terms about the, the, uh, the terms under which city fire staff could be possibly employed by the fire protection district. And then there's, again, some specificity as to the plan for services itself, just, just the, the, the specifics as far as inspection services, um, that kind of thing, um, you know, how many hours uh, a, a fire protection district staff member will be at City Hall to answer questions, those kind of things. Okay. So nothing that changes the plan for services in any significant extent. To, Just to want any to get that background. Extent. And then uh, go ahead, Commissioner Freeman. As you recall, my objection was that the people of, that once we approved the annexation, um, the mail-order vote is taken by uh, there, sorry. Uh, my objection or concern was that the people have to vote. Once we annex, then they are asked to vote on this. If we um, took the suggestion to approve subject to approval of the agreement, when would the vote be taken? Well, it doesn't necessarily go to a vote. The first process is the protest process. Well, the protest vote. Right. That's what I'm talking about. But my concern was people ought to know what's in it before they vote on it or before they protest or mm -hmm. have any opinion or, or solid opinion. Uh, well, my plan would be, if this were approved, to start the protest process uh, relatively quickly, there is a 30-day period, a reconsideration period, that the commission that you know that uh, during that time, no action can be taken, um, and there can be re requests for reconsideration, the commission's reconsideration of their determination. And that's a 30-day period. I could start that protest process after that 30-day period. Actually, it probably probably would be preferred in this instance, and that would give an extra uh, additional 30 days for um, that memorandum of uh, agreement to get through the process, further anyway through the process. So that's one option. I think I would do that regardless, <clears throat> wait that 30 days. Commissioner. Uh, to, to follow up on that, if I may, uh, if, the, if your commission were to adopt a resolution approving the annexation today subject to that condition, it would trigger that time period that Mr. Loam is talking about. Um, so while, yes, there, it's discretionary whether to wait the 30 days for reconsideration, <clears throat> Um, beyond that, the, the trigger would, would have already been um, set by your vote. And so he could not delay, you know, for three months, six months, it, the, the protest proceeding would commence. Thank you. Uh, I have a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, could you please exp explain briefly the process of um, the MOA and how that fits into our decision here today? Well, it... <laughs> The MOA is not a necessary part of this process. Um, it, it, it's not going to change. Based on what I've seen, it's not going to change the plan for services. And what the commission's consideration really is is that plan for services. Has the district demonstrated that it has the capacity and the capability to provide the service, and will that funding be made available uh, for that service? So um, the MOA just kind of furthers those the, the plan for services um, and solidifies them under the agreement. Uh, but, but as far as whether it's going to change services, I don't believe it will based on what I've seen. So it, it really is up to the commission. The commission can certainly choose to wait to see what's in it to um, ensure that it doesn't affect services beyond the plan for services. 
or you can take an action now. So um, inside the MOA, mm -hmm. the only purview uh, of this board is to look at for the plan for services, right? Right, and whether the MOA would alter that plan for services in any significant way. And as I said, the draft I've seen does not do that. Okay, and I think we heard last hearing that that was the case, too, from the county fire chief who, who came up to speak. That's correct. That. And, and the plan for services actually says what is in the MOA or is going to be in the MOA. Right. So. And, and my understanding is that um, if the MOA was not um, adequate for both agencies, then the annexation would not be approved. The is annexation, that correct? yes, the annexation would not be finalized if the MOA is not um, executed by both parties. So, if you're confident that the MOA has um, adequate services and it follows the law of LAFCO and all of our ordinances um, within the current MOA, the LAFCO could take action um, today to approve the annexation, and then if the MOA was not adequate, then it would not be recorded, right? That's so correct, So basically yes. every, we start over. That's correct, yes. And there, the, the, there's a condition in the resolution of approval specifying that, and that comes at the request of both the city and the fire protection district. And that's not new. That's been in the works this whole time, right? Right. That was in the previous resolution of approval. Okay. And, and lastly, uh, Excuse I me, Commissioner Rooney. I, before you move on to your last question, I want to clarify something with respect to what the discussion was here. Um, under the condition, this proposed condition, um, LAFCO would not really, uh, Mr. Luoma would not be able to look at the actual terms of the MOA. All he'd be looking at is has both, have both the fire district and the city approved it. And that would satisfy the condition. <clears throat> so you wouldn't have the ability to evaluate the terms and make a judgment call as to whether they, com they comply or otherwise with any law, let alone LAFCO law. The condition would be merely ministerial on his part. Has it been approved by both the district board and the city council? Okay, but and so I've got to ask. So what is in the current draft document for the plan of services appears to be adequate. But what I think I'm hearing you say is that if something changes in the meantime, we still don't have a right to look at that and make sure that the plan for services are in place? Um, I, I'd have to revisit the actual draft resolution. Your, your commission could say with respect to the plan for services that was already presented to your commission in November, we're approving it subject to that plan for services. Okay. So that, then the district and uh, the city could not um, um, change that part. Now, with respect to the areas that Mr. Loma referenced, you know, the terms and conditions of, of the transfer of real property, the terms and conditions for um, equipment and employment and those sorts of things. But that's not our jurisdiction anyways, right? Well, um, yes and no. Uh -huh. uh, the, the commission it, under, under CKH, which is the, the law that governs LAFCO, um, has a lot of authority to impose conditions upon an annexation. We, we um, and, and those conditions, okay. you know, range to, to all of the areas that are being considered by the parties in the MOA. However, if you were to impose a condition that the, that the two parties didn't agree with, they could walk away. So I want to, you know, I do want to clarify, that was another area I did want to clarify that uh, the issues being discussed by the city and the fire district with respect to the MOA, uh, many of those do, would fall within the jurisdiction of the commission um, to impose conditions along those lines if your, if your commission were not satisfied with those. But can I? Can yeah, I? I know that we do want some more clarification. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah, the, but the, really the MOA is really not our, in our purview per se because if the city and, and, and the uh, and, and the county agree, you know, what, you know, I don't, I don't see any concerns with that. If we approve this and, uh, subject to the MOA, <clears throat> and we can always change it, right? Uh, I mean, no, I mean, no, they can always work uh, with the MOA and agree on what they want to agree on. It might make, make, it making sense on that. Right, so if it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, if the commission approves this subject to the plan for services, That's right. uh, then I would review the MOA to ensure that it is consistent with that plan for services. Um, and That's right. not recorded if it's not, 
and um, perhaps even bring it back if it's not for your commission's consideration. <coughs> so I think we, we could be okay if we approve it, you know, subject to the MOA. Or, you know. Okay, I've got a, anyway. a couple more is, questions. Is that accurate, Mr. Walker? <clears throat> Do you find it would be accurate it, with respect to the so extent we, the MOA we, is inconsistent with the plan for services because we submitted. Because right. we ask our executive director to see that it is consistent. That's right. Correct. So at that point, it's not just uh, looking at it administratively that they both signed it, but rather to actually look at the contents of it and see that it's consistent with what we are approving if, if it is approved. With re, yeah, with respect to the plan for services, which is a term of art in LAFCO law, right. um, and that was submitted by both parties for, for your consideration in November. Okay. okay. I'll just finish my last couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> at the last hearing, there were um, comments made that there was environmental injustice and some other issues that were brought forward. So have you looked at any of the other concerns that um, were brought up, and are we in compliance with every law and ordinance that this board is responsible to? Yeah, those issues were evaluated in the November staff report, and we did not identify any issues of environmental justice. Um, from our standpoint, this is an enhanced service that everybody in the city is going to be receiving uh, from the fire protection district, so I, I don't see any injustice there. And then um, there was a conversation about um, how much money this was going to cost, and there was um, there were two different, widely different um, statements that were made. In fact, one by the city manager um, that kind of refuted the 79 percent of the property taxes were going to the fire department. So, I, I just for purposes of clarity, um, it was 79 percent of the 49 percent or something that was dedicated. Not 79 percent of property taxes are going to the fire department. You know, I may be a little off on my numbers, but it's uh, sixteen and a half percent of the. Michael, <laughs> so it, it equates to about seventy nine percent of property tax revenue that's going to the city would then be diverted to the uh, fire protection district, and that's according to the agreement. Um, and that that analysis or, or that agreement was. Um, the basis for the determination on how much revenue the, the district is going to receive over the next 10 years, 15 years, that amount of revenue really isn't going to be impacted by uh, city manager's um, point that there's going to be additional tax revenue. That is, it is not 79% of all tax revenue, only of this uh, right. property tax. So as I recall, that it would, it's not widely different from what they're currently paying now as to it, what they go with the county, it's not wildly different, um, the amount of money that's going to be expended. Right, uh, yes. what I, they're currently doing. Yeah, the city budgeted for I this fiscal in year. The back the city. Okay. Right, yeah, about $3 million okay. um, over 10 years is what the city would spend. And I believe it's a little over $3 million average right. over the next 10 years what the district would spend. And so my last just clarification, just to make sure I've got this right, is that if we approve the annexation today with the conditions that the MOA is consistent with the services that were agreed to in the November hearing, that we could move ahead with that um, approval today. And if that doesn't happen, then the annexation would not be filed, recorded, right? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That's good. I think yes. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you. My mic is not me. Yes. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I was unfortunately not able to be here during the public hearing last time. Um, I want to ask um, our director, you know, I'm, I'm uh, uneasy approving something before it's finalized. It makes me just constitutionally uneasy. It's just I've seen things just kind of disintegrate over the course. I, I assume that won't happen. but. Um, I want to know why the recommendation from the staff was to continue. It seemed like a strong recommendation, uh, despite all the things, positive things we've heard just now. The recommendation really was a reflection of the commission's previous action. Okay. Uh, the commission continued it to this date because the MOA had not been executed. Uh, because the MOA still has not been executed, I wanted to reflect the commission's previous action of a continuance. However, that being said, I did provide that alternative um, okay. uh, 
uh, action and as I do in all staff reports. So. And the, the, the reason that it hasn't been approved is all of the disasters that have befallen our county. Is that my understanding? The Thomas uh, Fire and the no, need the, for... The reason it wasn't approved last time mm -hmm. and continued was because there was some hesitation on the part of the commission about what could be in that memorandum of agreement. But we still don't, we only have a draft. We don't know what's in it. That's correct. Because it is confidential as until it's finalized, it's confidential. That's correct, yes. You got it. Thank you. Yeah, are there any other questions, Commissioner Pardon? Yeah, so with, within the MOA that's not executed that you had access to, um, was there information related to workers' comp, disability for past injuries, um, PERS and all of that? Uh, Rather, that question be directed toward the city. The specifics of the, the employment I did not focus on. Because to me, one of our jobs as LACO members is to, to make sure that the, the, it's financially feasible. And for me, I, I'm just, I, I, I want to see that it's financially feasible. And I, I did read all the communications from residents within Santa Paula, and I have them all here with me, and they, they're very concerned about that. And I think in, to, to give full transparency on it, I don't understand the urgency of, of, of not continuing it. I, I really should continue this item, in my opinion, until there is an executed MOA, until we do have insurance, we can ensure that it's a feasible annexation. I, I, I know that you feel confident in it. However, and I truly feel that even the document you saw should be a public document. That's just my opinion. Um, because once you were copied on that document, then it is a public document. But I understand, you know, out of respect for the city, they asked you not to share it. So I would like to wait uh, personally because I feel I need to see the finalized document to make sure of the financial feasibility of the MOA and that it will work. And that, I feel that is our job because it is part of services, is that you can pay for the services. Okay, and uh, Commissioner Richards? Um, Kai, just a, if you could possibly recap what the concerns were for the city of Ventura, and uh, will they in any way affect the uh, proposal for the annexation? The concerns from the city were related to the possible closure of the county fire station located between the cities of Santa Paula and Ventura. And the reason is that that um, fire station does respond to calls within the city of Ventura. And the absence of that fire station will increase calls from the city of Ventura to respond to incidences out in the unincorporated county. Now, the they, uh, district did do an assessment of that, and it believes that it, it will still respond to incidences in, the, in Ventura from the new fire station in Santa Paula. It will take a little bit longer to get there, um, but the district believes that it is not a significant adverse impact to fire services uh, in the city. It actually turns out that the, the district responds more to the city uh, than the city does out into the county. So. And, and, and that was yes. shared by the by the fire chief of uh, mm -hmm. of uh, Ventura too. You know, the minimal calls. Right. So the county really was responding to more calls in mm -hmm. in the city. And the county will continue to do so. And continue. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wonder how that works financially. You know, the Ventura County Fire District. Uh, does it get reimbursed when it goes to the city of Ventura? I. I, that'd be a great question for probably mutual aid. Yeah, I, I think the general answer is no. That that the the agencies have a mutual aid agreement by which they agree to respond, um, and they don't do the accounting for that, except on you know, for instance, like a, uh, something on the scale of the Thomas Fire or other wildfires, mm -hmm. where there's recovery from the state, then everybody accounts for their time. Okay, uh, Commissioner Freeman, are you about to speak? <laughs> About <laughs> my, um, my question is, what is the urgency if we wait a month? I mean, I, I don't understand um, why we would need to approve something subject to if we know that in a month it's going to be all resolved. And the people and transparency, the citizens of Santa Paula will know what the agreement is. 
You know, uh, that, uh, that's a question yeah. not for you, Steph, right. but a commentary, shall we say. I, and, and if I could comment to that, I think uh, at our last vote, uh, it was uh, not so much is there an urgency, but is this really our purview? And I, obviously some commissioners feel very strongly that it could affect the services that are the, you know, the plan for services. So because they have that concern, we continued it to get the MOA. They still don't have the, and, and, and so we're in the exact same situation. <clears throat> we don't have the MOA before us. There was still that expressed concern. And, it, you know, because, because there's still that concern and because it's going to eventually work out, we can have it back next month potentially. Is that right? Uh, right, yes. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, just, just to be clear, it's for the transparency and for the citizens of Santa Paula to know <clears throat> what's in the agreement mm -hmm. and for the citizens of city of Ventura too. Good. I mean, I just think people should know. Mm -hmm. I, and as I understand the, the protest vote would take place 30 days after our decision. We want to make sure that MOA is already available to the public. Right. That's, that's, that's yeah. where I'm coming from. Yeah. 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 Madam Chair, I would like to hear from, I'm, I'd like to hear from the city of Santa Paula. I'm sure that the city of Santa Paula is, mm -hmm. Anxious to get this uh, completed, you know, and I potentially I think it might help their budgets, you know, and then also uh, I think it'll uh, it'll help the mm -hmm. district, you know, also uh, um, bring those firefighters in and and provide the protection that Santa Paula needs, you know, and even though we have mutual agreement, but. Uh, I would like to hear from Santa Paula and see what they yeah, think. Yeah, we, we do have a couple yeah. cards. Commissioner Rooney also had a question. Is that right? Yes. Um, I would like to hear from uh, perhaps the county fire That's as to right. how a delay would impact the services um, and the planning for for the years ahead That's and right. to see how, how this delay m might be impacted, um, whether the county fire and or the city uh, fire. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would like to comment on that. Okay, so we go ahead and call the cards in. Our first speaker we have is Martin Hernandez. Uh, Ginger Girardi. Yeah, want I'm you want to go first? The mayor and then I'll follow her okay, fine. Sure. Mayor Mayor Girardi. <clears throat> Thank you. Good morning. Um, it would be our wish to see this resolved today, if it's at all possible. Um, and I understand the comments and the issue about having this continued. I'd like to tell you that we, the staff, has met, and, and our, um, our vice mayor, myself, with the county staff. There are virtually no issues with the MOA. The MOA was delayed because of the fire. We were very, very lucky in Santa Paula had the fire actually started, not started in the unincorporated area, um, we would have had a great deal more damage within Santa Paula because it takes a while to get the uh, mutual aid back into the city. Those of you who probably don't know, and just make this quick comment, we had the county sheriff there. I was at the main center when the fire first started. The fire um, beat the sheriff to Victoria. He left, got to Victoria, the fire beat him there. That's how fast this was going. I said at our last meeting, this is a matter of public safety. This is not a matter of, of um, some of the things that have been just discussed here, you know, how the, the fire department or the fire district's chairs were set up. It's a matter of seeing that the residents in Santa Paula mm -hmm. provide good fire service and that our first responders are protected. That is really our only interest in getting this done. And another fire could start. We've had a lot of things since the Thomas fire. We would urge you to please go forward with this so that we can do our budget for next year appropriately and do our planning. The longer we put this off, the less planning that we can do for how we move forward. We are convinced, and I, I, I don't mean to say that I sounded prophetic at the last meeting, but I told you the fires do not respect city boundaries. And the next thing we turned around and we had this massive destruction all over the county. You know, that could happen at any time. So the our only protection in this county is <clears throat> to whatever the least protected agency is. And we're asking you to help protect the citizens of Santa Paula. The conversations with the county have gone wonderfully. There, ha there are virtually no problems. We have attorneys looking at T's and dotting I's. That's where we're at with them. So I think Martine would like to make a comment. Let's, are there any questions? I have a question. We do have a couple questions. So you. you believe 
based on the attorneys are dotting the um, I's and T's, that in the next 30 days, that MOA should be executed from your perspective, right? I cannot see why it will not occur. Okay. Um, and just to answer your question about benefits, the bulk of what was in that MOA was from the <coughs> Human Resources Department of the county, making sure all those provisions were correct. So that was put in. It was through the process of going through all of that. That's the bulk of what's in the MOA. Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Zaragoza, then Commissioner Rooney. So, so Ginger, our mayor, if we approve this item today, then that will expedite the process yes. by about 30 plus days or so. Correct. It will allow us to deal with our budget for next year, our mid-year budget, do planning for staff, staffing, et cetera, um, so that we are moving ahead in an orderly way. It's, is it critical, crucial? Will we live if you push it off for another month? Sure. But, it, but it, as far as we're concerned or the council is concerned, it's the right decision for Santa Paula. It's the right decision for our residents. And we would like to get on with it. And, and I think you said something really important that I, safety, safety of, of, the, of the constituency of the residents is extremely important. I think there was one gentleman here that said that last time he was 80 plus years old and he does not want to wait for a, a department that cannot respond immediately. So I think safety is extremely important on right. my part of it anyway. Right. And that's, we agree. Mm -hmm. Our residents and our first responders are not properly, um, they, the first responders are not properly equipped to do the jobs they're doing. That's a huge problem for us. The more we put that off, the longer that goes on. A quick question. Uh, Commissioner Rooney. Just a quick question. You said that um, the council urges us to move ahead. Did the council take a vote on this very issue? Of, no, you mean between last meeting and this meeting? Mm -hmm. It has not come up. We've um, moved, voted four to one to proceed with the annexation. That still stands. It has not come back up because the MOU, obviously all of our fire departments were pretty busy. Yeah. Um, they did not finish that to put it on our agenda. As soon as it's done, I expect it will go on our agenda. I do not expect that we will, at least with the council, that the council will have any problem um, in approving it. Uh, again, it is consistent completely with the service plan that you've seen. Uh, that's basically what's in there. I think your um, discussion about uh, giving, making sure that it's consistent with the service plan gives you the protection that you would need to move forward and allows us to get on with a, an orderly budget and planning process for the city. And Mayor, do you recall what the vote was in November um, to support annexation? Yes, for our council, it was four to one. Four we to have one, one okay. council member that... Um, yeah, she spoke last time. She spoke. Yeah, okay, right. thanks. I would assume that you're, the city is doing their budget based on the assumption that this annexation will move forward. Well, I mean, we, you're in that position to do that now because you know the terms of the MOA. Uh, we don't know, yes, but we don't know when this will take effect and what effect that has on your budget planning for the year. So that's one of the things that the longer we put this off, the longer it takes to actually go into effect. So it's, it's, it's a fiscal planning issue for the city. We can plan it one way or another. As, as I said, it's not going to kill us if we have to wait another month, but basically, as far as the council is concerned, the council has made the decision that this is in the best interest of the citizens of Santa Paula. If we wind up having people go in and appeal this, so be it. I think the majority of the citizens of the community value the services of the fire department. I mean, they, all they had to do is look around. They were out all over the town. And we were exceedingly lucky only because we didn't lose water and we only lost electricity for a short amount of time. And there are signs all over the town for people thanking the firemen and the policemen for saving our city. So it's, you know, they're, they're relatively supportive of what the people did to protect our homes. I mean, I was evacuated twice. My, the fire came right into my neighborhood. So you all know, and I'm sure we all have friends who've lost homes in this tragedy. We'd like to make sure that our people have the same quality services that most of the rest mm -hmm. of the residents in this county have. And that's why yeah. we'd urge you to go forward. But if you need to wait a month, you know, we'll live with it. But mm -hmm. we don't think you're going to gain anything by waiting a month. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mayor Girardi, a couple of questions, too. Uh, so your comment regarding if it had started in the incorporated city, you may have been worse off. We would have been extremely worse off because... 
uh, it takes about 10 minutes to get all mutual aid up there and in. The fire started at the near Thomas Aquinas College, which is just north of the city, mm -hmm. and at Koningstein Road, which is just a little bit north of that. We were up there right away um, supporting the county staff because we have a really good mm -hmm. working relationship with them. And our police and our fire, et cetera, were mobilized within the city. They were mobilized in all of our um, you know, uh, residential areas from all over. We actually were able to protect the hospital, for example, the county hospital didn't, you know, there, there was a huge effort. But if we had, if it had started within the city, we would have had 10 more minutes of that fire going mm -hmm. with only the, the forces that we have without the kind of um, backup that we would have normally needed. And uh, it just, just because of the way, you know, you have to get there. That's I, the only I, I, that's a, It is interesting because instead of your fire stations uh, manned or with your city fire department, it would be with the Ventura County Fire Department. And they'll be right there protecting the uh, community. So they would be there okay. and they have more equipment. They have appropriate equipment. Right. I'm not saying uh, that all of the firemen did a fabulous job. Our fire department did a fabulous job. Nobody has any complaints about that. You're Our residents did a good job. The, the equipment that you have available to you, the resources that you have available to you. And the fire protection equipment for our first responders. Okay, so, uh, and then also uh, the concern, as I hear it, on the MOU, uh, other than the uh, issue of having it available to the public <coughs> in time for the protest vote, is that it may not be fiscally um, feasible financially feasible, and there was the desire to look at it to make sure, because LAFCO's responsibility, we don't want to have the, you know, a significant impact, but your city is comfortable with the finances F of this? Yes, our city council is comfort comfortable with the finances. This is approximately the same amount of money that we are spending right now for fire services. There's no difference. It's going to continue to go up what we spend for fire services, whether we do it ourselves or we're part of the district. And, but the difference is the quality of the service and the equipment and what benefit our residents are going to get. And from my uh, reading of the budget, it looked like it just happens to be coinciding with the, the end of the redevelopment agency uh, funds mm -hmm. that would have been going to uh, the fire district the funds now would be part of that property tax, which would go to the fire district, uh, mm -hmm. to the county fire district. So that there were some funds that were already allocated elsewhere that uh, are available. I'm going to ask the city manager or somebody to respond better to that. The total dollar amount is equivalent to what we are currently paying. Right. And is equivalent to what we would continue to pay if we were running it ourselves. The difference is the quality of the service and what our residents get. And that's, as my job as mayor, is to see that our residents, or as member of council, is to see that our residents are protected. Once we looked into this and we actually found out the condition of our fire stations, the condition of the equipment, you'd be remiss not mm -hmm. to try to deal with it. Okay. So that's where we're at. Well, it, it is good to know that, uh, as you said, it, you could wait a month. Your preference for both safety Correct. and um, convenience of budget would be sooner than later. Uh, but, and I also understand, you know, just being here today, I look out, you know, there's thousands of dollars in staff and all that. that are, are Madam Chair, just two, two questions. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned before that it's going to protect the constituency and the residents. But it also, it's going to protect the firefighters. That's correct. Because they it's, need that equipment. They need, you know, they're excellent firefighters, but they need the additional equipment that the county can provide. And I that, think that's extremely important. Ex absolutely important. Mm -hmm. That's one of the critical issues. Our fire people are at risk. We need to protect those. And we need to make sure that they are adequately protected. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about for us. Right. It's providing protection for the people and our and the, employees. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you for Thanks your so comments. We then have Council Member Hernandez, followed by Chris Mann. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioner, staff. I'd like to take an opportunity, first of all, to thank you for having this on your agenda again. I hope this is the last time, personally speaking. But I'd like to take a second to also thank um, our fire staff there in the city, as well as the county. Also, the uh, representatives here that represent our employees in the city of Santa Paula. 
And I think my, my point this morning in speaking with you would like most likely be around smart government. I mentioned that last time I was up here before you. Not just good government, but smart government. You know, there's obviously some really um, seasoned experience up on your dais, and I really have appreciated the conversation I've heard this morning, particularly with um, clarity to some of the points in the resolution, particularly. I, I can't think of a better safeguard for your commission to approve an annexation that is only good for a year upon execution of the MOU. Uh, that's a perfect safeguard for you. I understand, I want you to understand, first of all, that this has not been a decision that's been taken lightly or with any expediency. We've been at this for almost two years now. And the staff information that we've gotten from our staff has totally convinced the majority of our council, not only that the plan for service has already been approved by our council, so we're completely comfortable with the plan of service, as well as the 16.5% tax share agreement, which speaks to the finances of this, of this annexation. So we're completely happy, confident that the finances are going to be managed within our city. The reason for the expediency, I think, in my opinion personally, is for what um, Commissioner Zaragoza spoke to. Public safety of our residents, I think everyone during this recent disaster of this Thomas fire did an excellent job. And it speaks to our first responders countywide. And I would pit any one of our fire department personnel from Santa Paul against the county or any other fire department there top notch. My concern for those gentlemen and ladies are that <clears throat> their equipment is starting to fail. Their breathing apparatuses are outdated, their hoses are outdated because we can't afford the increasing cost to continue to provide them with the, those, those um, amenities. It's a, um, it's a shame frankly, and it's been that way for a number of years. Matter of fact, when I ran for council the first time about six years ago, that was one of the big issues that the chief made me aware of then, was that they have really reduced their equipment and training budget significantly. And to me, for people that don't run away from fires but run into them to save personal property and lives deserve the best equipment necessary. And I'm very frustrated that we can't do that as a city. This annexation provides us that opportunity to do that at the same cost. I've looked at spreadsheet after spreadsheet after spreadsheet and where they vary every time they come to us because there's a little this or a little that, it's within half to 1% of the previous number, so no huge variance. But the smart government piece I talked about is you've got your staff recommending approval, continuation only because of your previous action. They, they um, recommended approval the last time this came before you and I, I think that most of the commissioners up there feel that this is the smart thing to do for a city to provide better public service for their residents. At the same time, stay within the purview of the commission and let the city do city business. Please, I respectfully request that. Let the city take care of our residents. I understand your purview. I've watched you commissioners for the last 17 years. I understand your role. Your role is to approve this annexation, allow us to deal with the finances. The plan for service is already approved. You know that. I, I, I just can't think of a better um, uh, opportunity to approve some smart government in action for, the, for a change. So thank you very much for your time. Any questions? Yes, there's one. Yes, ma'am. Um, somehow I got the impression that you thought some of us weren't in favor of the annexation when you just spoke. Um, I don't... I'm not sure where you got that impression um, because I'm not sure anyone's opposed to the annexation. I think we were, some of us, mm -hmm. were just asking for more information. I, I understand Okay, I just that. wanted to clarify that with no, you that's because... Fine. that's fine, Commissioner. And, and, and with all due respect, you know, that's why I started off with smart government. I mean, if this... No offense, but if I were in your seat right now looking at what was in front of me, I'm thinking, how could I lose by approving an annexation that is contingent upon an executed MOA to be use inaugurated? Because the finance has already been decided. 16.5% tax share agreement has been agreed to by both parties. The finances are in order. The service plan is in order. So I, I, I didn't mean to say that you weren't in favor. I just don't see how more information can make it any easier for you. And do That's you think all. you could address uh, Commissioner Freeman's concern that she wants to make sure that the MOA is available for public review during the protest of, 
proceedings so people have full information if they want to protest? Sure. My understanding from <clears throat> staff both at the county and with the city is that it's very shortly forthcoming, the executed MOA. It will probably be coming before the council very shortly. Uh, the protest period, I, I would need to be reminded, I know the 30-day clock starts clicking or ticking in order to um, apply for the protest, but then there's a period after that in which it's allowed to be heard. So I'll, I'll wait for that information in a minute. But I think that once that's been executed and it's on our agenda for review, then it becomes public. So I, I would say, given my best estimates that I've been given, probably within 30 days. Okay, got the nod from the city manager. So, it, and, and it's really important for the reasons the mayor spoke to for budgetary reasons because, you know, I could go on about the Measure T and how that is to enhance our public services and our police department is patiently waiting for us to start addressing those issues as well. And they've been patiently waiting for almost two years as we've gone through this process, very diligent process to start supporting our police department and providing the services that they so are in dire need of as well. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Uh, Councilman, I, I respect, you know, the San Paulo City Council. You're the policymakers. Thank you. You're the leaders of that city. And I think uh, you and the mayor said it well. You know, this is a budgetary item that you're looking at for the future. You're looking at the safety, again, of the constituency, the safety of your firefighters. You're also looking at, at uh, looking at better equipment. And I want to reiterate that again, you know, because right. of that safety. Right. And, and I think the last time that somebody spoke was at... Uh, when a firefighter went out and they came back in from a fire, they didn't have the proper uh, mm -hmm. equipment to to clean themselves to make sure they were not contaminated with X, Y, and Z, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So I think those I, I respect the, what the city council wants, and I think it's important. You. you know, I don't, I'm sure that you're going to be transparent with with the with the, Absolutely. With the city and also with the county. So uh, Th thank you for that, Commissioner. And I, I do um, I think you'll learn more once you hear Mr. Mann speak as well mm -hmm. about our employees. Thank you. Okay, thank you very thank much, you, Chris Mann. Members of the commission, Chris Mann with Ventura County Professional Firefighters. And again, we represent the firefighters in Santa Paula as well as the firefighters in Ventura County. Um, the listening to today's discussion, and about the impacts of having a delay and what's the harm of another 30 days. Well, it's another 30 days on top of another 60 days from the last um, commission meeting when you re received a report that complied with all of LAFCO's requirements. There is the one-year period after for, uh, under which a, an MOA has to be executed, and you've heard today again that MOA will be executed. Uh, and, and not a year after, um, in the very near future. Uh, but the suggestion that there are no impacts to delay uh, is incorrect. And the idea that this is a rushed process is also incorrect. This process has been going on for at least a year and a half. And some of the impacts of waiting uh, are to the firefighters themselves. And they're pretty serious. Uh, during that time, and in preparation for an annexation in order to bring everybody over uh, with, the, with the least amount of impact to everybody, uh, you know, the following changes have been made. There have been a halt in hirings. There have been no, fire, no new firefighters uh, hired in the city of Santa Paula. There's been a halt in promotions. There are people occupying temporarily promoted positions, again, uh, with their full agreement, knowing they're going to go back to a lower position uh, when they come over to the county. Again, they were temporary with the city. Uh, they understand that, and uh, they're going to be coming over to the county in their actual original position as agreed. Uh, there have been no raises. There's been no new contract. These guys are three years without a contract, and that process has been halted uh, in anticipation of having this annexation go through. So there is a lot on the table here. Uh, when it comes to these firefighters. And frankly, they've had to make career decisions that they've put on hold, whether or not under Santa Paula's current and declining conditions for their fire department, whether or not they should stay 
in anticipation of annexation with the county or whether they should be applying elsewhere and going to other fire departments. And I can tell you there are a lot of them who have held on that decision so that they can support the city and move forward with the annexation. So with all of that in mind and with the um, good government concerns that have been uh, expressed already and knowing coming off of these last fires uh, and seeing what the needs, actual needs are for fire service in the city of Santa Paula as well as the rest of the county, uh, I would strongly urge you on behalf of the firefighters in Santa Paula and in the county fire department to please approve this action today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Uh, that concludes our uh, public comments on this item. Yes, Commissioner Rooney? Um, I had asked that the um, county fire chief perhaps give some explanations to uh, what the delay might cause. Thank you, Chief. Good morning, Chief Lorenzen. Good morning, uh, members of the commission. For the record, Mark Lorenzen, county fire chief. Uh, I'll, I'll address a couple of items that were set up here. I'm not as optimistic that we'll have uh, an MOA within the next 30 days by the next meeting. I just, I'm a, a pragmatist, I suppose, with the process. We still have to deal with attorneys on both sides. Um, there are a lot of I's to dot and T's to cross, but there's also uh, both sides have to come together and, and basically um, you know, design the document. And, and I just am aware of the SIRE process for our, on our county side and, and timeliness. So it's overly optimistic to think it would be prepared and ready by your next meeting. So I just I wanted to offer that from my, my perspective. And I will say, um, as we are looking at the annex annexation process, I'm a strong proponent of moving forward today. And it's for these reasons, and, and there is some harm that occurs with delay. And I will say, uh, Mr. Hernandez is correct when he says he has exceptional firefighters in his agency. I look very much to welcome, welcome them, welcoming them into our county fire department. But what comes along with the annexation is we are not providing equal service to what, what they have. We are providing better service with greater depth and greater breadth. And with every month that we delay, it delays our opportunity to do, uh, to do that. It also delays our opportunity to revert, uh, review the level of service that they have in there separate from the annexation and actually enhance it. And while it's not part of the annexation process or the plan for service, the Ventura County Fire Department provides ALS services. That's through uh, firefighter paramedics. Santa Paula does not uh, do that and currently cannot do that. And once the annexation occurs, my gut feeling is, is that we will be looking at enhancing those level of services in the city of Santa Paula. So yes, um, the, the delay, while it's, it's not super significant, it is interfering with our ability, uh, our, our ability to enhance the level of services in the city of Santa Paula. Once the annexation is approved by your commission, it's still going to be uh, multiple months while we um, were unable currently to put the current employees for Santa Paula through our normal background and medical processes until it's approved and we can give them a conditional job offer. So we're probably talking about three or four months of just background processes that we have to go through as a, as a county in, in order to do that. And with every month, um, obviously, we have that delay. So with that, I'll answer any questions. Uh, Commissioner Parvin and <clears throat> then Commissioner Ramirez. Chief, um, question about um, meeting with the uh, city of Ventura. Are, it, it, the report indicated that it seemed like there were some communications since our last meeting with Ventura. And there, there have been. And there was a, a plan to meet with the city council in early January at their council meeting. And unfortunately, due to the Thomas fire, that was, that was delayed. Right now, we're currently planning on meeting with the city of Ventura on December 12th on their Monday council meeting. Chief and I and I will address the council. Um, I will say, and I've consist, been consistent with it, and I referenced it at the last meeting, that uh, it is my personal belief that the impacts from the movement of Fire Station 26, while it has an impact on the city of Ventura, it's, it's not a significant impact, and, and fire services for both the county and the city will still be more than adequate. Thank you. Sure. Bless you. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Uh, Chief, um, I, again, 
you know, just sort of this instinct that it's not final yet and it could still be a problem. But tell me, you said this delays the review of how to provide services? What was it that so, you said? So, and this is what's interesting. And is why, is why once, couldn't that go forward? Well, the, because they're not, uh, Santa Paula is not part of the fire district. If and when they become part of the fire district, we will treat them just like we would any one of our communities and evaluate the level of service there. That hasn't happened yet. That, that hasn't happened because they're not part of us. Mm -hmm. When they become part of us, we will, uh, without consideration of jurisdiction or boundaries or borders, look at the level of service that's provided and if enhancements are necessary and needed, we'll provide those. Without consideration of um, funding sources, basically you become part of this big risk pool and we'll provide adequate service based on that. So if we were to vote to approve today, when might the review of uh, services begin by your your right, uh, right away. I mean, we'll start once it's been, uh, once that motion has been set. Well, I, I will say we will start doing an informal review of that. We've already done some internal reviews, and we, we, like I had mentioned previously, that just that consideration of providing paramedic services in there has already informally been considered by us. Obviously, we can't formally move forward with it until the annexation's been proved and the waiting periods have occurred, and um, you know it becomes finalized and also finalized with the MOA. So in fact, in fact, you've you you sort of informally started. The sure. Point. You know, everybody knows what <clears throat> what's at stake. Uh, of and course, yes. Okay. And and then as to and I, I completely understand the the need for transparency. And I uh, I will say, you know, we had initially provided a draft MOA to the city of Santa Paula. They rewrote it, and that really the differences between them, other than the I's and the T's, are really negligible. There is nothing substantive in there. And none of which, as, uh, as Kai has referenced, impacts the um, provision of services to either of the communities. Okay, and Madam then um, we have other questions. I, I, um, if, I'd like to make a motion. We, we, I think we still have a couple more questions. You know, right? one, as soon as what the questions are. Okay. Uh, so, Commissioner Freeman, then Commissioner Richards. So, uh, on the MOA, will that go to the City Council of the City of Ventura? No, the MOA will be reviewed by the City of Santa Paula and approved, hopefully, and then also the County of Ventura. So it's necessary for the City of Ventura to be satisfied on Station 26? I don't think the City of Ventura will necessarily be satisfied. Okay. They're at the third district, essentially. <clears throat> right. <laughs> yeah, right. But, I mean, their concern is for their... Their, their concern, and, and right. the reality is, is with their, the annexation... If the annexation is approved, uh, Chief and I and I and their uh, approving body will have to continue discussions on how we're going to, you know, address any of their concerns separate from the annexation process. And Commissioner Richards, did you have a question? Uh, no, I had a question for uh, Mayor Santa Paula. For the Mayor of Santa Paula. Does anyone else have a question for the Fire Chief? I do. Okay, let's go to Commissioner Parvin and then we'll... From there. Okay, so um, this is, since I've been on LAFCO, I think this is the first um, annexation of a city to the fire district, as far as I know. Um, so I'm not really familiar with the whole process, but how, I don't know how many you have gone through, Chief. I, I don't you, know. We're in the same boat. This is okay. the first. This is the so, first in the, in the history of our fire district. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Then we should be honored. Yes. yes. Okay. So my question is, wouldn't you recommend, I mean, would you recommend going forward, let's say the city of Ventura decides they want to be part of the district after this is all said and done, okay? They decide they want to be part of the district. Um, would you recommend, because you are the chief, that possibly that there's some negotiation on an MOA prior to um, filing for an annexation? Uh Prior to filing, well, and there well, have been lots maybe of negotiations. as long as it's an yes. MOA is kind of available <clears throat> kind of prior to coming right. to Alafco. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? I, I yeah. wish I wish Wiki, WikiLeaks would come in and, and leak <laughs> a copy of the MOA and so the, the veil could be pierced and everyone could see that it's really not a big deal. I mean, that's my wish. And okay. then there was lots and lots of conversations and a, a number of the items had been worked out before the application had even been sent to your body for... Uh, consideration. So okay. uh, it's, it's just the nature of two things when you have uh, 
uh, a county board of supervisors and a city council that both have to approve these things there they're always in draft form until they're they're actually done and completed so okay thank you yeah. Uh, we have one more question, sure. Commissioner Rooney. <clears throat> so at the last hearing, Chief, I believe I recall that the fire chief from the city of Ventura was here as well. Yes. And he had mentioned that he met with you frequently, you know, throughout the year and had meetings and whether they're coffee meetings or, or hallway meetings or something. But he, he had had conversations with you um, on this issue numerous times is that correct correct yeah so it's not a surprise to the city of ventura what you're doing and what the plans are and the plans for services right uh, i don't believe so okay and and formally um did they express any interested concerns that we haven't already heard about that might there, come as a surprise to the moa no formally or informally there's no ad additional concerns that have uh, that we haven't already at least acknowledged Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether they've been addressed or not, there's probably a difference of opinion. You know, from my perspective, I, I don't see see anything that necessarily needs addressing. But I, you might have a different viewpoint from the city of Ventura. Okay, and and lastly, you said that um, you know that this current contract is really no big deal from the mm -hmm. last um, MOA that was presented and. And has been reviewed. I mean, we've heard that. The, are you talking about the two different versions, the, yes. the counties and the cities? From November to what we're trying to. There's been, yeah, there hasn't been any substantive change to the, the MOA. Okay. And, and none of it has impacted the, the services that we'd be uh, and providing. And the city, in essence, said the same thing, too. Yes. That it's, it's negligible at this point. So um, do you foresee anything happening within you know, that's going to come up, that's going to make no, that. No, I, I really don't. And to be honest with you, I, I don't, um, I would imagine that we will be having conversations with Kai to make sure if there are any changes. And, and Kai had reviewed our draft and mm -hmm. also the city's draft. Uh, and I, I can't imagine that it would be any different, that we would make any changes to it, to it without first at least giving it a, uh, Kai an opportunity to take a glimpse at it and, and see if there's anything problematic. And it sounded it. like from Mr. Mahan that the firefighters were taken mm -hmm. care of within this agreement as far as all of the benefits and um, oh, for sure, yes, you know, compensation that goes mm -hmm. along with there. So uh, to me, it sounds like there it moves from a policy perspective to an admi administrative perspective that we perhaps could allocate to our staff to look at the MOA when it comes back. Um, Scenes how everybody is saying that this is pretty much done um, and that we trust in the work that's been um, provided with the city, the county, the fire, you know, everybody that's been involved here, that we could move it to an administrative perspective um, when we approve the annexation. That's what it seems like to me. Anyway. And additionally, you will also have the commitment from us, both Santa Paula and the county, to press for an approved MOA as quickly as possible so that it should be available during the, the protest period, mm -hmm. especially in light of a 30-day waiting period before it begins. I, I'm, I'm ready to make okay. a motion. Thank, uh, thank you for your mm -hmm. um, thank you. forthright testimony, Chief. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, the annexation, and, and I respect the, the city council. They're the policymakers there in, in Santa Paula. And I respect the chief. You know, we just mentioned that uh, the county is is uh, working with the with the city and and I'm sure that Ventura is going to help us out once we we uh, work this out because as with the Thomas fire really showed us something you know and that we need that partnership and and as uh, the mayor mentioned you know it's they're looking at their budget uh, Terry uh, concerns in the future they're looking at the safety of the of the people of Santa Paula they're looking at the safety of our firefighters and the uh, cost is going to be the same as mentioned by with the council member and also the mayor. And, and the chief, you know, our chief, uh, Mark Lorenzen, says, you know, we're in good shape and we want to help and make this a great partnership. So I'd like to sh share that we uh, make a motion that we approve this annexation. You know, I'm going addition. to second that um, with the following comment, too, that I'm concerned about what Mr. Mahan said about delaying this is going to cause you know, the continued hold in hiring. The prison um, our, our firefighters operating without contracts, having question marks that they have to deal with every day. Um, and also the improvement, the improvement to facilities that would not happen while we're delaying all That's of right. this. 
and that we're not reaching out and protecting the city of Santa Paula in the appropriate way. And I feel that we can move this from the policy decision to an administrative decision and let our staff um, do the work on that. And real quick, and also the Thomas Fire has taught us a lot. You know, we need those good firefighters. We need to protect them. We need to protect our residents. And I, I think it's extremely important that we, in my opinion, that we approve this item. Commissioner Richards. Mm -hmm. uh, the aspect of uh, the opposition seems to be focused on how property taxes are going to be affected uh, with regards to this annexation. Um, I have not heard any comments as to how the city has responded to the uh, uh, opposition. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned with the fact that uh, full disclosure may not be uh, uh, forthcoming without the, uh, uh, the specifics of the MOA. So, and well. when you talk about property tax, you're more referring to how they are allocated. That's correct. Well, that's and, and as problems. I understand, yes, that the residents are concerned that the money would be going to the county for the county services instead of staying in their city. Uh, and they, you know, I also heard testimony from the residents that it's in that, you know, their stations are really nice. <laughs> but um, again, it goes to listening to, you know, in my perspective, listening to the professionals that the stations may look nice on the outside, but they definitely need the resources on the inside. Um, but I also am sure you know that the mayor can share this in the council. And they've had numerous meetings and, and from the city council with city residents' input and so forth. So it's, this is, you know, I'm sure they've discussed this over and over again. Um, can I ask a question, yes. staff? Yes, we have a, a question in the middle of our so deliberation. So, Kai, would you outline to me on a timeline if we approve this subject to the MOA being in place? Exactly when would the protest vote be taken? There would be a 30-day period that uh, we would wait for a reconsideration request. So February, mid-February. Okay, so that's right. And then following that, uh, we would start the protest process, which could last anywhere from 21 days to 60 days. It has to be some time frame in there. For this, uh, I, I could extend that protest period to 60 days if that's you know, the will of the commission. Uh, and at the end of that 60 days, there would be a public hearing that uh, the commission has delegated that authority to me, and I would count up the level of protest. So if the level of protest does not rise to a level where a public vote is required or the process is terminated, then um, I would wait for the MOA to be executed if it hadn't already. It would have most likely been. So we are talking uh, potentially 90 days. Uh, altogether, yes, until yes. there's the protests. So here. in that interim time, um, the MOA would be made public to the city citizens of Santa Paula? The MOA would be subject to a public hearing before the city council, so they would go through their public hearing process. City then I want that, I want to be assured that the citizens will have that prior to the close of any protest vote. That's not a, an assurance that I can give. I mean, based yeah. on the chief um, the saying, city. you know, I mean, I've been in government long enough to know yeah. that when you have multiple agencies and comment periods and all of that, it, it can it, take a really long time to dot that. On. Yeah, I mean, it. <laughs> but I, an I, attorney's I would like to back ask. and forth. I'm not. I'm not My sure. My concern is I want to make sure that the citizens see uh, that before the end of the protest vote. So the, the question that I, I hear her saying is that the, uh, the annexation would not be approved officially by LAFCO if it's contingent, right, on the MOA. So it wouldn't be until the MOA is approved that the, the LAFCO decision is implemented. Then I would think we would have the protest vote because we're saying it's, it's not going to be annexed unless the MOA is signed. Is that done? No, what, no, what would trigger the protest period would be the adoption of the resolution that is the subject of the motion this morning. E so, even though the resolution would include words that it's contingent on the signing of the MOA. Correct. Okay. Because okay. the protest proceeding would be going toward your resolution. Okay. And all the conditions. And that gives it. us the input that we need. Yeah. Okay. So you feel comfortable that the residents would have the opportunity to review the MOA prior to the annexation becoming official? 
Based on what I'm hearing, again, I can't guarantee that that's going to happen. I have no control over the adoption of the MOA. But based on what I'm hearing, if we start a 60-day protest process following the 30-day reconsideration process, there will be 90 days uh, by the, in which to approve that memorandum of agreement. And if it's done within that 90 days, then it will be made available. It will be available to the public for consideration during that protest process. Minister. But if the MOA is not available within that 90 days, then the protest vote would go on with or without the MOA. That's correct. Uh, and then you could have a situation, because if we made it contingent on the signing of the MOA, that you have a protest vote on something that doesn't ever get implemented if for some reason it isn't, you know, the MOA isn't agreed to by you or it isn't um, signed. Right. It, well, if, the pro if we conclude the protest process, I would not order the annexation to occur until that memorandum of agreement is executed and we've um, assured, okay. you know, confirmed that it does not affect the level of services or the plan for services. I think the mayor was... Uh, yes. Can, can we bring the mayor up? And Mayor. Um, you know, we are in the middle of deliberation, yeah. and, so, and so let, let me just ask the commission, is this good to bring yes. Okay, I just Go wanted ahead. to make a quick comment that the city council has on record uh, on several occasions that we will make this document available to the public for their information as soon as we have it. So it is absolutely our intention to make the document available for full public review. So there's, you know, we're, we're committed to transparency as well. We just don't want to pass out a document that's got technical errors or anything else. So as soon as it's in, it's going out. It'll be on our website. It'll be out generally for people to, to look at. And um, the other issue that we've spoken mm -hmm. to is, you know, the city's fairly quick in turning over stuff. I can't really speak to the county process. If it takes a little longer, it takes a little longer, but we're all committed to expediting this. Thank you. So. But my concern is what if you don't have that prior to or prior to the end of the protest period. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... Should we ask the fire chief and see if he thinks 90 No, days? that's okay. okay. <laughs> Call for the question. He gave us thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> he would. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is... Uh, it, would it be something that we would need to direct here that you do the 60-day as opposed to the 30-day? Uh, no, I'll, I'll do the 60-day. I mean, that's 60. If, if yeah, that is something obvious. that the okay. commission wants. Okay. I, I think the giving the go-ahead that we are okay with the annexation is the big vote <laughs> that we could have here, and then the rest of it can, can continue along. Uh, but without this, everything has to just keep suspended. I really think that overall this is good government, clearly. Um, the city realizes their resources aren't sufficient. The fire district by economies of scale, among other things, has the ability to provide those resources. Uh, I have confidence that this, with the city's budgeting that they understand the costs that are going to be uh, paid for this and they feel that it's something that they can handle. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I was comfortable, obviously, with this uh, at our last hearing. And I am even more supportive of it, realizing that you also have some safety uh, benefits as a result of being able to move now as opposed to waiting another month or two. So mm -hmm. um, I am supportive of, of you, the motion. Do we call for them? Uh, Commissioner Ramirez. I, I'd just like to have the re be clear on what the resolution is. I know there's a motion mm -hmm. on the floor. And I would just want to say as, a, as an aside, I am so aware of what it takes to, uh, to build a budget and to uh, prove uh, basic services for the community and unfortunately some folks think it falls from the sky it doesn't. Kai, can you, uh, and, and I, I do feel you want to encourage this because it is good government yeah. instead of you know being a stickler and holding out for mm. you know every I dotted so can we have the resolution so as, as far as far as the motion that you have before us it was to approve staff recommendation there's been discussion here about uh, whether we have the 60-day period and I, as i understand uh, mr loma do you want to right with right that? the motion to approve would be the alternative action it's not the recommendation that's right so right. the alternative action is on page 28 of your staff report and it's uh, alternative action a the alternative action A is what uh, 
would be my motion to approve that. And then with the 60 day. Uh, okay, and uh, the uh, second to the motion will, agrees with the main motion. So uh, it's to approve the annexation, mm -hmm. um, contingent upon the MOA, and then a 60 day protest period. Right. Uh, I'll agree to that. Okay. Okay, if there's no further comment, could we have a, a roll call vote? Um, yes, but let me qualify it. Only because I want to be assured that the people of Santa Paula have all the information they need to make a protest vote if they choose to do that. And the reason, the other reason for my vote is that I think the fire, the Santa Paula Fire Department, as well as the fire district, has a lot to do to get ready for this transition, and that speeds up that process. Otherwise, they're on hold. So th there are multiple reasons, but I still have concern that I want transparency for the people of Santa Paula. Yes, with the same concerns <laughs> expressed by Commissioner Freeman. Um, yes, also with the same concerns expressed by Commissioner uh, Freeman. Yes. Yes. Yes, and we will ask that it be um, disclosed ASAP as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, with that... Um, Congratulations to the city and the fire district. I do see this as good government, and it is maybe it's the beginning of a trend, and we'll see some other cities wanting to join too, and we'll have better understanding of the process when we do that. Uh, at this time, then, we'll go to our executive officer's report. Uh, really very little to report. I do want to congratulate Commissioners Ramirez and um, Sarah Gosa, excuse me, <laughs> for being uh, reappointed to another four-year term on the commission by both the Board of Supervisors and the City Selection Committee. Even and though with, I have a uh, two-point uh, something years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the next meeting will be uh, February 21st, and we do plan to bring the City Municipal Service reviews to the Commission for uh, consideration at that time, and potentially some of the updates to the spheres of influence for the cities. So, and that concludes my presentation. And, and cupcakes for the Chair's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> on the 21st? <laughs> well, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, so now we'll go to uh, commissioners comments. Yes, Commissioner Rooney. I would like to thank staff and everybody who made it possible that we started recording our meetings. Um, I found it extremely helpful for me as I prepare for the next hearing, especially when we have two me two months off, uh, to go back and look at the the testimony and the hearings. And so I just wanted to say thank you for allowing. Um, the um, access to the public to and to the commissioners to fully uh, be prepared and, and see what we talked about last time and make sure we're all on the same page. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And super. Uh, yes, I also want to thank uh, Kai, you know, for giving us this uh, uh, review of the things that we're going to do with the MSR, you know, and the Americans Disability. Uh, Concerns and also we have a big project that's going to be coming forth, you know Over at Rio Mesa some what 1300 homes and so forth, you know, and yeah 1305 farm worker dwelling units uh, yeah. outside of Strickland acres. So it's it's major so yeah. I was looking at his uh, Information here and this we're gonna have a lot of fun here this coming year <laughs> <laughs> <Again>. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for the, for the for giving us all this information ahead of time, okay, and with that we will stand adjourned Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.